Today's video will be about Malware, our luggage warehousing automation system. It consists of 15 of these wrist modules and some software to make the process of retrieving luggage for guests at an event easier and more efficient. The core concept is that we can take a look at all of the luggage that has been requested by guests at a certain point in time and then cluster up these orders and send multiple of them onto one wristband. That means much less walking and searching for our staff because the numbers on the modules are usually pretty close to each other and it's the same back in the check room. The video you're about to see is intended as an instructional video for the voluntary helpers we have here at the events on campus. We hope you enjoy and if you're interested in the more technical details of malware and how we set everything up, then please leave a comment and we'll see if we can make another more uh, specific video about the system. See you soon. Hi, you've chosen to support us in the check room. Thank you and welcome. We aim to make your experience more pleasant and efficient with our system malware, which includes these wireless wristband modules. This video is a primer, so we don't have to convey all of the following information in the noise environment during the event. We'll start with the main task of the first shift incoming luggage. There will be a large bag of coat hangers at the checkroom entrance and one of you will support the guests there. It's absolutely crucial that they place their luggage on the hangers themselves and completely close them up. Please make sure they don't overload the fragile coat hangers. Multiple heavy items should go on separate hangers. When guests hand over their luggage at the checkroom counter, you can tear the next ID slip from the roll. Afterwards, tear that ID slip in half at the perforation and affix the part with the hole in it on the coat hanger. Give the other half of the ID slip with the barcode on it to the guest. Instruct all guests to take a photo of their received ID slip. This step is crucial for retrieving luggage and verifying ownership later on if the ID slip goes missing. There's a separate range of numbers for items that can't go on a hanger, such as handbags and backpacks. Fasten your ID slip to these items with a zip tie. Afterwards, hang the received luggage into the buffer rack behind you. If you're not currently accepting any luggage, your task will be to transfer luggage from the buffer rack into the checkroom. Inside the checkroom, there will be numbered ranges such as 1 to 50 or 1400 to 1450. Please be extra careful not to mix anything up here. It's really hard to find a misplaced piece of luggage, especially when there's lots of traffic in the checkroom later on. Handbags and backpacks have their own spot, usually a set of tables. During the next shift, there will be a mix of guests wanting to deposit and retrieve their luggage. We already talked about incoming items, so let's take a look at what guests need to do to get their luggage back. The first step is to scan the ID slip at our barcode scanner. If the ID slip has gone missing, you can directly send the guest to one of your supervisors. It is not possible to scan the photo off a phone screen or to type in a number manually. This is a security feature to prevent guests from stealing other people's luggage. Next, the guests may wait in the pooling area until their luggage ID number is displayed on the TV screen. They should not directly walk up to the counter and keep the space clear for other guests. As soon as their number is displayed, they may walk up to the counter and then retrieve their items. To aid in the retrieval task, some of you will receive a malware module. Initially, your module is disabled. In this state, it will not receive any luggage ID numbers until your supervisor activates it. After activation, your module will be assigned a random name this is useful for the statistics that we'll take a look at later on. Your supervisor can send you messages just like this one to support you during your shift. You can hide it by short pressing the big button. As soon as malware has a luggage ID ready for you, your module will vibrate and flash. That means you can go fetch your first item. When you're on your way, your module may receive additional luggage numbers that are close to the one you already received. This is a core feature of malware. The more guests want their luggage back, the more we can cluster the orders and you can retrieve up to four items at once. That means much less walking and searching for you and less waiting for the guests. As soon as you've located all of your items, you can confirm that using the button. If you release it too quickly or hold it for too long though, it won't register. We designed it this way to avoid accidental confirms if you accidentally hit the button or if a luggage item covers it. The blue bar on the right side of the screen gives you some guidance on the right timing, but you'll get the hang of it pretty quickly. The numbers on your module will turn yellow. In this state, you won't receive any additional luggage items while you make your way to the checkroom counter. Simultaneously, all of your numbers are already being displayed on our TV screen. 
Because guests wait in the pooling area for their number to be displayed, there should be very few people actually in front of the checkroom counter and you should be able to distribute your items pretty quickly. Make sure to retrieve the ID slip from the guest, tear the other ID slip half off the coat hanger and throw both of them away. This prevents random ID slips from laying around and causing confusion. Hand out the luggage, including the hangers, and ask guests to deposit the hangers into the respective bags at the exit. This saves your time and keeps the space on the counter free. Now is the right time to confirm on your module for the second time. Your luggage will be registered as done and vanish from the TV screen. Please resist the urge to confirm any earlier, because you might receive new luggage IDs instantly and you will cause delays if you're still busy handing out the old luggage. If your module stays empty for the moment, you can relax and wait back in the check room. One of you will be helping guests at the barcode scanner. Usually, the display will flash green, which means you can instruct the guest to proceed to the pooling area and wait for their number to be displayed on the TV. Under increased load, the barcode scanner will flash red at some point and display a please wait info. This happens to prevent the pooling area and counter from becoming too crowded. So please instruct the guests at the barcode scanner to wait there for a few moments. After a couple of orders have been processed, the scanner will return to its unlocked state and you can ask the first guest in line to scan their ID slip again. If the scanner repeatedly flashes red, please check if the guest is trying to scan something other than their ID slip or contact your supervisor. Now, to make your experience with malware even more fun and maybe a little bit competitive, we've added some statistics that you can view in real time and compare yourself to other players. You'll find the name previously assigned to your module in graphs displaying your average collecting and delivering time and the number of delivered items overall. That's almost it. We'd like to equip you with some additional tips and tricks before wrapping up. If you need to take a quick break during your shift, just notify your supervisors and they can disable your module in the meantime. This also works if you have just received new luggage items. They will be automatically moved to the modules of your colleagues. Please leave your module with us if you need to wash your hands during your break. If something is unclear or obviously wrong, for example, you can't find a certain luggage ID or your module does something you didn't expect, notify your supervisors. We're here to resolve all of the special cases and we're happy to help. Don't let guests pull you into an argument. Some might try to convince you to just quickly grab their jacket without an ID slip and then proceed to describe their item as a black coat with a hoodie, which matches like 1500 items in our inventory. The supervisors can try and help those guests find their items via their handy photo or give them an email for lost and found luggage to contact in the following weeks. Last tip for today, take a look around the check room a couple of minutes before your shift and familiarize yourself with the location of the different number ranges. It helps a lot to already know where to go when new numbers pop up on your module or where the incoming luggage has to go. Thank you so much for being part of the team. We hope you have a pleasant night using malware. See you there.